All right, uh, last segment here, guys, uh, on a Monday, breaking down the markets, getting started for the week here with Tackle Trading. Uh, Marky, uh, you wanted to, to kind of reserve oil analysis for your commodity corner and your yeah. highlight. And, you know, Coach Mark over here at Tackle Trading, everybody, if you're a halftime crew, you know him. He's here every day. He runs our customer service, podcast producer, wonderful uh, host and coach. And commodities are one of his passions, no question about it. And he runs our commodity corner, our commodity report on the weekends as well. Uh, Marky, what you got here for crude oil in the commodity I, I, you know, and once again, uh, Tyler said something on Trade Masters that I really liked. Uh, he was he was bringing up a stock this last Wednesday, and he was like, "Listen, I brought up this stock before, but if it's not broke, don't fix it." And when I was like going over it in my head, uh, you know, I had Joe Pesci saying, "If it's not broke, don't," fi-, I, you know. I, I, <laughs> so Joe Pesci, you were, you, know, you were, if you had committed just a little bit more, I think you could have got I, I, I just, once again, no go coffee, Joe no Pesci, coca. You have to commit you like Tim go commits Joe to you gotta be, Jones. <laughs> you know, but, I, but the point Tyler was making is a good one. Yeah. You don't make extra dollars for creativity. You don't make extra dollars because you're trading hard trades. And sometimes you will find, I mean, look at copper for the last year. Look, like sometimes you will find something that works, that you have a good feel for, that you like the story and the story doesn't change. And maybe even the story gets stronger along the way. There is nothing wrong with trading the same stock or the same area over and over and over. If it's working, it's working. If it's working, it's working. If it's working, it's working. And keep at it. And that's how I feel with oil right now. Um, I... The, the, the macro things, and I'm not going to go into full dive. We've spent a lot of time this year uh, here on the Halftime Report and the podcast talking about the big picture of oil, right? The big picture of oil, uh, how it benefits from a reopening of the world economy, right? Pent up demand, travel, how consumer prices probably aren't going to impact that travel. Higher gas, well, you know, when you haven't vacationed in a year or a year and a half, I think people are going to pay it in the pocket. We've talked about OPEC, and they're doing a good job of curtailing the supply side of it. So the whole equation, uh, we, we talked about U.S. production, how it was cut dramatically in the pandemic. And you just don't turn on rigs overnight. That's a process. So everything was lining up from a big picture analytical standpoint uh, for good, healthy oil prices this year. I mean, there's so there's been a theme behind it, you know, and so the reason I'm bringing it up today is because we had a little breakout last week and we had OPEC uh, come out and they reaffirmed that they're because this is one of the things you develop a thesis, you develop a theme, you develop an idea. And then when there's new information, you have to keep an open mind because sometimes it will blow up. Sometimes it will be reaffirmed. Sometimes it'll become stronger. And, you know, once again, reaffirmed uh, last week, OPEC, that they're going to gradually keep to their April guidelines uh, that they put forth Russia on board and gradually increase the supply uh, in, in, in the coming months. Now, at some point in the future, Six months, 16 months, I don't know. Uh, Russia is going to open up the points hard. Uh, supply numbers are going to be high. That's a conversation we'll have nine months, 16 months, 26 months, because you don't know the when. But in the next six months, in the next three months, in the shorter position trade environment, um, when we get reaffirming catalyst, and then when we get technical signals, and this technical break last week, um, was not only the break of a short-term consolidation range that had lasted a couple months, something I like to refer to as multi-month consolidation. Uh, it's breaking some levels uh, that, that existed before as well, getting that umph above it. Plain and simple fact is I, I think everybody's anticipating higher gas prices Everybody's anticipating pent up demand. Uh, I mean, this is one of the things that, you know, we were on this months and months and months ago pushing energy, but there's still legs up, I believe, in this trade. And particularly from a cash flow, particularly in those energy companies, which is a reminder, some in particular, like Exxon, who had truly outstanding earnings reports 
um, you know, very constructive of what they've done in the last year. Higher energy prices benefits oil companies. That's not a shock. You don't need me to tell you that. But with the oil breakout itself, I think it provides opportunities. A plus from a cash flow standpoint, in my opinion, on energy companies, but also to look for those directional movements because price movement is fast. And while price movement can be very fast and very sustained, uh, look for those signals because when I get a breakout on the commodity, um, it's only a matter of time if that breakout is legit. And like Matt said, it might take a day or a week off and that'd be healthy to test to make sure this is okay. That would be normal. You don't want it high flying. You want gold's trend from the last couple months. You don't want AMC's trend here. Um, but I think there's some constructive and I think there's a leg up and it continues to be an area of the market that treats me very well from a cash flow. It's been a very good cash flow year in commodities. It's been a very good cash flow year on oil. The theme is still there. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Keep going to the well. Yeah, we're talking about here today, the best sector mm -hmm. in the market, right? And uh, the entire argument in the energy space has been catch up, catch up, catch up, and not just to crude oil's chart, but to the rest of the market, right? Whereas the rest of the market has recovered pandemic price. What's energy doing? Last week, breaking out of pandemic price. And so when you're talking about the key levels of the market last week, yeah, you can you can look at the, the market indexes and you can really gravitate to certain numbers. But when you're talking about the, the, the numbers that, or the important resistance levels that were violated last week in both crude oil and in energy, I think that that's impressive. I think it's very impressive. When you're looking at crude oil here, uh, you know, breaking out against that 66, 67 handle, breaking out on a no sell week, coming into that 70 handle, very positive. When you're looking at it from a trend and pattern perspective, you obviously are looking at this bullish from uh, both a short term here and an intermediate there. You're looking at a bullish retracement that is ob that cup and handle, maybe a little bit, ascending triangle, maybe a little bit, high base over the course of the last week, maybe a little bit. But regardless of the continuation type pattern you label it as, you're looking at the importance of that 66, 67 handle, and you're saying, I like that breakout. When you're looking at energy and you're saying, okay, energy, again, the argument, catch up, catch up, catch up. Well, energy last week finally gave that breakout of that 55 handle where old support, old support, old support, old support, pandemic, you saw what transpired. Then finally here, we're breaking out. Now, obviously, in, in the crude space, you know, for, and, and Mark, it could play some defense. It could play some consolidation, and that shouldn't concern anybody. As long as those breakout channels of 55 in energy and 66, 67 in, in, in crude don't get violated. And so you're, you're just, it's a fairly simple analysis there. And, but when you're looking at this from a technical where can it go perspective, well, the continuation trigger would be above 70. And I think that's pretty uh, solidified here on crude oil. Where can it go? 75, 76. That's, that's where that next stepping stone really is. 67 was 70. 70 is now 75, 76. And so you're looking at a price target in the short to the intermediate range in that 75 to 76 level. That's, that's pretty legitimate for a, a, a crude trade. And that's pretty decent price appreciation in the short term if it does achieve that. Energy, you're staring at. You just can't get away. Your eyes cannot get away from that 200-day moving average at this point. You obviously saw the importance of that 200-day moving average on the weekly chart there. You saw it play a significant role here as well. And this is really lining up for the first test of that weekly 200-day moving average that it's had since April of uh, 2019. And so we're coming into that very, very important long-term resistance channel. And uh, although I, I do feel that is a price target where you're looking at that in the 57 handle, so the, the, the price appreciation in the short term in crude probably has a little bit more legitimacy than the short term in energy. But I love energy above 57. I love it above 55. But if you can get above 57 here, 
there is nothing that's going to stop this trend from continuing. And no, Mark, I'm not projecting, you know, a hundred percent rate of return. Not I'm projecting consistency. And in that consistency, you have confidence in breakouts from a short-term trading perspective. And you have a lot of confidence from a cash flow perspective with naked puts, boomerangs, covered calls, cash flow strategies because of what is happening from a price perspective. And so, yeah, I do think a, a spotlight on energy right now is, is legitimate. It's really lining up with the strength of the market, kind of, you know, it doesn't look as good on the long-term charts because of the recovery analysis in energy, but in short-term, I'm not sure there's a better area of the market in short-term right now than the breakout of 55 on energy. And, you know, and that's from a directional, you know, and, and even if oh, that it, directional- cash flow, from a cash flow, <laughs> it's just so easy right now. If and I know Kim hates the word easy. I just like, oh, if it, it's like relative. Energy, it's just it, relative. Easy is relative, right? But it was, it's like when energy went down like five, six weeks ago, I was like, I don't care. I, I believe in this theme. And, and it just, you know, I just think it's just a great cash flow environment with directional opportunity. Yeah, if the confidence in directional systems is increasing, then obviously the confidence in multi-directional systems is massive. It is I, massive. I, I would certainly agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Because quite frankly, crude breaking out of 66, 67, like you highlighted on the technical chart, Matt, as long as we hold the breakout channel, even if XLE doesn't run 10%, you got to feel very confident about corporate profits and all the backstop and all the themes that you guys have been uh, detailing. So uh, I like it, guys. I appreciate that, Mark, uh, for running us through crude. And, well, and uh, honestly, Tim, if we were talking about energy stocks at the top end of the range and fighting mm -hmm. against all-time breakouts, I would not have the fundamental belief in this space as it does in recovery analysis. That's no, right. and, and if you're out there saying, because I know like energy is one of those things, and I'm not talking about tackle trading members necessarily, but it is criminally underrepresented represented in portfolios because uh, uh, you know, energy stocks stink, right? Blah, blah, well, blah, for blah. For 10 blah, years, blah. they chased growth. Exactly, right? So I get it. I understand. Yeah. And someone might ask, well, you know, have I missed out on the move? You know, because it's a question I always ask myself because I wish I would have caught the bottom or somewhere near there. I don't think you've missed out, especially from a cash flow perspective. But guys, I, 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 energy companies did amazing things in the pandemic to get leaner and meaner. Um, so missing out on something is a matter of perspective. At some point, the Dow's at 100,000. So it's always yes. a matter of timing and perspective. That's right. That's right.